let Coach uh, make a statement and start here, and then we'll take some questions in the room. Uh, first off, uh, my condolences with the uh, Landry family. Uh, obviously, great, uh, great, great, great player. Um, not only as a college player, but as a pro player as well. And our condolences, the entire UMass football program, athletic department, uh, you know, uh, wish him and his, wish his family really well. Thanks, Coach. Question for Coach. Uh, coach, just looking back at Saturday's game, uh, having to you know, keep, keep it tight up through you know, three quarters and yeah. you know, towards the fourth fighting back. Um, what did you notice from that game looking back at the tape? Well, you know, I don't, I don't know if you guys picked up on it, but um, got a little nicked up as we went along in that game, especially with the defensive front. But, you know, you kind of hit it, you know, we're, we're sitting there 13-13, you know, cranking up in the fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, obviously, weren't able to uh, get over the hump. Um, you know, the disappointing thing was we had that kickoff return, which, you know, really hurt us. You know, uh, put the ball on the four yard line. And, uh, you know, those, that, that was a killer. Um, I thought offensively, uh, I thought we threw the ball well and, and ran the ball to some degree well. Um, we were 5 of 14 on third down. Like to be a little better than that. Like to be around 40%. Uh, they were 9 of 11. Um, the thing that uh, kept us in it is we had the sack to get off the field, the fumble to get off the field, recovered by uh, Donovan Dyson. And then we, uh, Rutherford had a nice interception in the end zone. Uh, that, um, you know, I certainly seems like they just said to heck with it, we're not, we're not going to throw the ball. And we did lock them down uh, receiver wise, you know, and one of the things that kind of you measured our 35 receiving yards we allowed in those 10 attempts, uh, the next closest team to us was Tulsa. They allowed 160 yards in the same number of throws and two touchdowns. So, uh, and really in the same number of pass attempts. So, uh, kind of an interesting thing there. Uh, Laurie had two field goals, which was good for him. And, you know, it was a, it was a good uh, energy boost and uh, good to see him do that because he's worked hard at practice. Um, you know, obviously, the two turnovers, we talked about the kickoff return, which in essence was a turnover. And uh, the, in the beginning of the game, you know, we had the uh, fumble that got returned down, you know, inside the 10. So, you know, some things there, we, you know, we keep competing, we keep working, we keep grinding. All those things are good. We did a better job in the penalty area. We had four penalties and 15 yards. Um, we just got to, you know, play, com you know, complimentary football and uh, give ourselves a chance to win. And, uh, you know, we've been playing some good teams. Obviously, uh, they're no slouch. Northern Illinois, they beat Notre Dame and uh, earlier in the year. And, and had a, a 190 yards rushing against Notre Dame as well. So, you know, they're a very good run-oriented football team that usually uh, plays complementary with their play-action pass game. And, uh, you know, kind of where we're at. You know, uh, we keep getting better, you know, we got a lot of people out there that are still supporting us, though. But uh, all I know is uh, I like our guys. They're working hard, and that'll keep giving us a chance as long as we keep m maintaining the same mentality. And short of the calendar now, Missouri coming to McGurk on Saturday, 21st ranked team in the nation. Um, you know, 
probably not a stretch to say one of the biggest games in the history of this program at the FBS level. Uh, what does it mean to you to be such an important part of Saturday's game? Um, you know, those when you get get to play SEC type opponent, you know, obviously that's a great thing. You know, it it it'll challenge our players. The nice thing about games like this. You don't have to work real hard to get the guys excited about playing. They'll be excited. There's no doubt about that. And uh, we just got to prepare, um, put the best plan we can out there, bo uh, both offensively and defensively in our special teams. We've got to eliminate the big mistake and, uh, you know, Compete, our, co compete at a high level, that's what it's all about. So we're going to get that opportunity this weekend. You mentioned dealing with some injuries this past Saturday. How's the team going to look this weekend, in your opinion, health-wise? Um, too early in the week to really tell you, to be honest with you. Um, I, I think we'll be, we'll be fine. But, uh, you know, I don't want to say a whole lot until I kind of see how we uh, respond in the next couple of days, 48 hours, so. You mentioned special teams being an area to work on. You guys have had two big kickoffs, you know, over the past couple of weeks allowed to the opposing teams. Um, what do you think's led to that deficiency and how have you and Ben worked to fix it? You know, I mean, obviously it's a, you know, it's an 11 man deal. You put the whole kickoff team out there, you gotta have guys that are doing the right things in their coverage responsibilities the kicker's got to kick the ball, you know, hopefully into the end zone where then, you know, uh, you know, they're forced to go from the 25 and put the whole thing together, you know, and, um, you know, we're, we're working real hard to, you know, to prepare and do those things. But, you know, it, it's a skill, you know, the kickoff part of it's a skill and, uh, you got to get the ball in the end zone, and we have a guy that's capable of doing it. He's just got to do it on a regular basis. Northern Illinois had a pretty good game uh, when it comes to running the ball against yep. you guys. What's going to be the key moving forward to kind of flip the script and, and defend the run at a high level? Well, we just got to go back and, and go back to fundamentals, and that's what do I mean by that is let's just make sure we're lined up properly. Let's make sure our fits are right. You know our shades are right on, our, on in our in our uh, run run fits, so that you know uh, we don't have two and one gap that kind of thing. But it's 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 a real you know the question you you state it's really simple, but hard to do is stay focused. Just play your responsibility. If you're the C gap defender, be the C gap defender. And uh, if you're the B-gap defender, be the B-gap defender. And it comes down to that. And, and obviously, we've got to give them a good plan, do a couple things differently. And, uh, you know, uh, I feel good about it. You know, we'll, we'll have a good plan for these guys, uh, you know, this weekend for sure. And I, you only passing it 10 times last week. Missouri, a lot more pass heavy with the yep. burden, the OEs. Um, how are you guys looking to scout the SEC opponent and the, the, the athletes that they're bringing to I, I, I'm kind of excited uh, about the pass, uh, our pass uh, defense and the way we've been going. Uh, we've been playing at a very, I think, solid level uh, on the back end, the back seven, and we are starting to get complimentary results from the front four in terms of rushing. You know, we play a lot of packages, so we get a lot of, you know, we get the nickels on the field. We get the extra linebackers on the field. So, you know, I think we've done a good job of um, challenging the, the offenses we play on third down. And, uh, you know, obviously, we'll. We're going to continue to try to do that again this weekend. Going back to dealing with injuries, guy like CJ Hester this past weekend and yeah. Ty Harding both had big games on the offensive side of the ball. How big are guys like that going to be moving forward to kind of fill the roles and fill the uh, big shoes that are lost by some injuries down the stretch? Well, let's. T.Y. Harding had his first multi touch 
football game. So that was that's a big deal. Uh, first uh, first one for you know in his career. Donovan Dyson had his first fumble recovery. Uh, Christian LeBron had his first career sack. So there's three young guys right there, you know, making their mark, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a big game. You know, you mentioned it. We were 13-13 going into the fourth quarter against a very good team that had beaten Notre Dame. So, again, I just... I just hope our fans keep the faith and uh, come out and see us get after it this weekend. And, uh, you know, we'll put a, we're not, I don't want to say that we're battered. It's not what I'm saying. Uh, what I am saying is we got a few guys nicked, so I'm not quite sure how those combinations are going to look. And then once I know them, then I'll let you know. And kind of to go off what you said, on, uh, you know, you know how well big schools fan bases travel. What's your message to UMass fans to try and get them to maybe steal some seats away from? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Let's let's get there and dominate the seats. That's for sure. So, you know, get there early and stay late. That's what we that's what we'd love uh, this Saturday for sure. And when you look at the play on the field, what's going to be the biggest key to taking a win against Missouri this weekend? Uh, you know, we the penalty thing has to stay away. And we've got to stop with the turnovers. You know, uh, we we just got to do it. And, and I'm not, and I'm saying in all phases, uh, special teams, offense, what, whatever. You know, let's just we got to we got to cut cut that out. And uh, you know, we, here we are last weekend. You know, and we give them two touchdowns, they, and they don't need two touchdowns. So you know that that. That makes makes it hard on on the on the guys wearing the uniforms. That's for sure, and, and of course, uh, the, uh, all the players as well. Any questions on Zoom? Any questions for Coach on Zoom? Yeah, hi, Coach. Um, with the top twenty-five opponent coming to Amherst, SEC opponent, do you consider this the biggest game of the UMass FBS era? Yeah, I mean, SEC, you know, gets gets no bigger than that, uh, you know, and obviously uh, our guys are, you know, going to have an opportunity uh, to make history. All they got to do is go out and compete and play at a high level and, you know, good things will happen, that's for sure. And the, and the thing that I like is some of the opponents we've played recently are, have certainly helped us prepare for this game. So we're anxious to see how we, uh, you know, how we uh, show up and, and compete on Saturday for sure. Ed, hi. Hey, Don, what do you see when you watch the Missouri tape? Talk to us a little bit about what they do offensively and defensively and what the biggest challenges are. Well, the biggest challenge is they're going to do what they do. You know, they, they have a style of run that, you know, that they run, uh, they run the slash play, which is, you know, a kind of an off tackle, uh, speed, outside zone play, you know, that's probably, well, it's no, pro not probably, it is their number one run play, they'll run the complementary type zone, and, uh, you know, then pull the guard tackle, and uh, run a uh, run some counter, but you know they also throw the ball pretty darn well. So and have a good group of receivers. So that'll that'll certainly challenge us. Uh, and I would say that would be their, you know, that the run game and the the play action pass game. I think is going to be you know the determinant of how we uh, we perform on Saturday. Any other questions for Coach? Thanks, Coach. Alrighty, thank you.